So, a very good afternoon to all of you and welcome to ADFAM's Festive Celebration 2022. Now, just in case you don't know, ADFAM is a national charity that supports and advocates for those affected by the drinking or drug use of a family member or friend. There are three very important things that ADFAM does. It empowers families and friends to get the support they need. It supports frontline practitioners to provide effective services and it engages decision makers to really understand the needs of the many people who are dealing with the substance use of a loved one. Now the figures are startling. ADFAM's latest research estimates that over 5 million adults in the UK, and that's one in 10 of us, are negatively affected by the drinking or drug use or gambling of a family member or friend. And obviously the festive period can be particularly challenging for those who are coping with a loved one's problems and can also be especially hard for those who've lost a loved one due to substance use. So this special lunchtime Zoom event is going to be taking the opportunity to recognise the lives of families who are affected by substance use and also celebrating the winners of our two annual competitions, the Family Voices Creative Writing Competition and the Gary Seaman Award. Now, Family Voices is a competition for anyone who's negatively affected by the substance use of someone they love. It's an opportunity to share that story through poetry or creative writing. And whilst dealing with the effect of a loved one's substance use can be a huge challenge, many families and friends find it really helpful to use the therapeutic medium and creativity of writing to express how they're feeling. Each year, families across the country enter this competition to share their stories. And this year, like every year, we have received an amazing selection of entries. Now, our celebrity supporters, they're going to be reading out the winner and the two runners up from this year's competition. And we are delighted that they've been able to take the time to support ADFAM. And they are terrific. We've got Sam Ryder our Eurovision star and probably the busiest man in music this Christmas. I think he might actually be the busiest man this Christmas apart from Santa. And Susanna Reid is joining us, star of the Breakfast News Desk. And we also have Jane Garvey, broadcaster and podcaster, and I think something of a national treasure. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Gary Seaman Award, which was set up in Gary's memory by his partner Michael and two sons, Alex and Luca and it recognises the outstanding contributions of a family support practitioner. Gary, if you don't know, devoted many years of his life to supporting and leading the fight for families affected by substance use in the London borough of Lewisham and beyond. And being affected by this issue as a family member can be incredibly tough, but it really is down to practitioners like Gary who can make a huge difference to people's lives not just supporting families to improve their well-being and feel better able to cope with the challenges on a day-to-day -day basis, but also this award allows us all to celebrate the work and contributions of an outstanding family support practitioner providing, providing such vital, much-needed support. Now, during this event as well, we're also going to hear more about the wider importance of recognising families affected by the issue including through people with lived experience, and we hope we'll be able to learn a bit more about ADFAM's work over the past year. So, we're going to start with announcing our first Family Voices runner-up. The entry has been read out by the Member of Parliament for Liverpool Walton, that's Dan Carden, who's been instrumental and a leading voice in highlighting the impacts of addiction through sharing his own personal experience and also advocating for change. So many congratulations to Richard, who is our first runner-up, with his entry, Back to Your Shadow. How did we not see you disappear as you slipped into those dark, dangerous waters? You left behind your shadow on the shore, a shape of what you were, what you could be once more. If only you would stand in the sun. We didn't even see you waving until it was too late. And then you needed saving. But from what? 
From the drugs or the drink or the dark thoughts you had to think? We let you sink unaware of the rocks in your pockets. So before our eyes you sank from sight day into night and from time to time you would resurface dazed and spluttering muttering long hidden truths of your despair things you couldn't share until it felt like you were drowning and then we worked hard to revive you to bring back the old you the you that we knew we wrapped you tight in love turned your lost dark eyes to the sun the sky in the hope you would see why things have to change have to be better than this but just as we began to look forward toward new possibility we didn't see you falling back in and we were left calling you back to us back to your shadow, the shape of what you were, what you could still be. Gosh, that's so powerful, isn't it? And really beautifully read by Dan Carden. It's not always the case that MPs can read so beautifully, so congratulations to him, and obviously enormous congratulations to Richard, and a very happy Christmas to you both. So next up, we would like to recognise someone who's made a considerable impact supporting families affected by substance use. John Taylor has worked for many years as a family practitioner for Turning Point in West London, building and running a thriving family support service in the heart of the community. And John, like so many, has had his own personal experience of addiction, both his own and within his wider family. Earlier this year, John published a book about his experience called Alcohol Stole My Mum, which is an honest and powerful account telling his story and reaching out to the many others who are also going, what, who are also going through what he's been through. John's experience has inspired many others and he also submitted a short film into this year's Recovery Street Film Festival and that film is called Who Am I? The film made the festival's final shortlist and we are delighted to be able to play it for you now. I'm John Taylor. I'm a recovering alcoholic, a father, a counsellor and an author. But some days I still ask the question, who am I? When I was a young boy I wanted to play for Arsenal alongside my hero Tony Adams. But my dreams were soon put to bed as I had to look after my alcoholic mother, trying my hardest to get her sober. However, I failed as that little boy, as I was never able to stop my mum drinking, so I soon started to hate myself. However, I found something that made me feel better about myself, and it was ironically the thing that damaged me so much as that little boy. Alcohol. Alcohol was soon my best friend, as it changed the world I was living in, from black and white to Technicolor. I finally knew who I was. I was Superman. I was invincible. I was drunk. I became a father and I vowed I would never be an alcoholic like my mum. Unfortunately, alcoholism does not work like that. It does not discriminate. And I ended up like my mum. So in 2003, I'm sitting in a rehab with a question to answer. Did I want to see my girls grow up? 
or did I want to be like my mum? I talked about my feelings for the first time in my life as I grabbed recovery by both hands and have been clean and sober one day at a time since that day I went into rehab. And guess what? I got to see my girls grow up who are now young, beautiful women. What a gift recovery is. I trained as an addictions counsellor and have been running a family and friends service for Turning Point in London since 2011, supporting people who are affected by another's addiction. I'm on this recovery journey and each day I feel that I get closer and closer to finding out who I am. I am John Taylor. I am a recovering alcoholic, a father, a counsellor and an author. What a fantastic film. Uh, I know that we all wish John and his family of I know that we all wish John and his family a really, really happy Christmas. Now, next up, uh, we are very pleased to welcome Deb, who was recently involved in ADFAM's Innovative Support Programme, which took place this year in Sunderland, founded, founded, funded by the Dulverton Trust for Families Affected by a Loved One's Co-Occurring Substance Use and Mental Health Problems. Now, this programme provided support, advocacy and research in highlighting and tackling this issue within Sunderland. Hello there, Deb, how are you? Hello, I'm very well here in sunny Sunderland. Sunny Sunderland, don't boast about that. It's miserable <laughs> grey London you're speaking to. Oh. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit more about how you've been involved with ADFAM this year and why. Yeah. Um, I was first introduced to ADFAM through Sunderland Carers, who um, the Sunderland Carers Centre, I went to, to visit them on a professional level, but I came away um, realising that I myself was a carer, um, something I hadn't considered, but I've got two grown-up children, um, both suffering du dual diagnosis, struggling with mental health issues and, and alcohol. Um, so they introduced me to, to ADFAM and to do some research, which I was very, very interested in. Um, and the research was really about looking at um, the carers, from the carer's point of view, what's it like looking after some somebody uh, with dual diagnosis um, and also looking at what is the support that's available in Sunderland. So I was very passionate about that because my, um, for me, we, we couldn't find the support that we needed for my two children. And um, at, at my expense, we had to go outside of the city to get the help that they both needed. So um, very expensive and very traumatic to try and find that help. Um, so I wanted to see some change in the city, and so I was very passionate about the research. Um, and just a little bit on the research, it was it was very difficult to be involved in that because um, addiction doesn't just affect the person that's, that's caught up in addiction. Um, it affects a much wider circle of people and, and family. And, and I think the worst part for me was the children that are affected, uh, which is my story. Um, my grandchildren ended up in care because of that. And um, if I'm allowed to just share a, a brief story that, that I heard during that research was from a, one of the other grand, grandmothers that she couldn't, uh, I think it was her, her daughter was um, struggling with alcohol and her little, little boy was taken into care. And um, it was separated from his, from his mom and his, siblings and um, there was a day that uh, the school rang the grandma because they couldn't cope with his emotion they didn't know how to handle him and he was about eight years old and the grandma went over to to the school and, and the only way she could settle this little boy was to, to wrap him in a blanket um, and give him a dummy and just the trauma that it affects um, is absolutely just horrendous so it was very difficult been involved in the, the research, but very, very important. So that's, it's such an important point to make, isn't it? And it's what ADFAM's all about. I mean, I wonder uh, if you think that we are really now starting to understand so much more about the importance of supporting the people 
who support those who are affected directly by addiction. Sometimes I think it's quite an unseen type of help. There's a high expectation, isn't there, that other people will be able to cope. And it's just not always the case, is it? Oh. And, and I myself, as I say, going to the carers, I didn't consider that, that I had a role. <laughs> I was just looking after family um, and, and didn't recognise really that that was a valid role um, as a carer. Uh, I wish you a very, very happy Christmas. We all do from ADFAM. I hope that sun continues to shine. I, I suspect it might get a little bit chilly up there as well, Des, but very nice to see you. Thank you very much for joining Thank you. Us. Thank you. And for all of your work, obviously, too. So next up, we are delighted to announce our second Family Voices runner-up, which has been read out by the wonderful Jane Garvey. Uh, many congratulations to our second runner-up, who is Christy, with her entry, a fantastic piece of creative writing called Need. Need soon took a slow hook. The quarter... Need. Needed. They needed it, but I always thought it was a choice. Every night, until that creeped into the day, functioning at first and then not, keeping it hidden and then not, the drink. The drinking didn't stop. Both sink. At first it was a Wednesday night treat, a quarter once a week, a social drink or two as I lay behind a sofa at their friend's house. The need soon took a slow hook. The quarter turned into a litre, and every night they took. Teacher's whiskey, their only teacher. They wouldn't be schooled by me. Needler. She wouldn't let it go, tugging on me. Wanted a daughter to be more and then less. Stay at home and look after, help her feel loved. They cast me in a role and told me they blamed me, almost gave up on me. You went away and we couldn't cope. Like a death it was, we're bereaved. In this story, it doesn't matter that the drinking started years before. Always the drink that had them wanting, wanting more. Needy. What about what I need? Parents that I didn't need to parent, please. I used to laugh it off, humour my armour, describe myself to others as Safi from Abfab. Laugh about the things they'd send me through the post. The classic used pizza cutter. I held so much anger and this anger turned into fear. I needed to be different from you. I had to. I defined myself through my difference to them, but I still feared that the same self-fulfilling prophecy would come for me, a right stitch up. What if I'm not a good mum? What if I drink too much like them? What if I'm what they told me I am? It's okay. I say to that little girl, sewn inside. I've had years of practice, besides. As a daughter of alcoholics, I'm watchful, vigilant, self-aware and attuned. I can read others' needs, and that's just part of who I am. Needless. Your family look perfect from the outside, I never knew. Behind closed doors, and not yet on the street. What a waste. Needless. They had everything then, lost it all. Him, his life, and her, eventually, me. Not a punishment, but a boundary held fast. It was a release to end contact and stop answering the drunken calls, the guilt trips. Birthdays and Christmas cards, yes. Photos of my son, their grandson, yes. But that's my limit now. I'm sure it fits their story of me, but I release you. I release your hold in me, as it's me who needs. It's my time now, and I need to heal. Well, congratulations to Christy, and a huge thank you to Jane Garvey as well. I think she could go far if she applied herself, couldn't she? That's Jane, obviously, not Christy. Uh, we're going to move now on to this year's Gary Seaman Award winner. And once again, this year, the judging panel have received an amazing selection of entries, demonstrating the vast array of talent and incredible and vital work going on amongst family support workers across the country. And this year's winner is going to be announced by the fabulous Susanna Reid.
The winner of this year's Gary Seaman Award is Craig Knowles of Hetty's. Now, Hetty's is a charity supporting families affected by substance abuse across Nottinghamshire. Craig works as the kinship care lead, providing support to families affected by substance use. A kinship carer receiving support from Craig nominated him for the competition, and so these are her words. It all began with an email which started with the words reaching out. Craig Knowles was at the receiving end, and thank goodness he was. We are kinship carers for her beautiful eight-year-old niece, who is my brother's daughter. He left when she was a baby, knowing her mother had always battled with addiction, regularly misused drugs and alcohol, and he was the same. Neither of them can put their children first above their fun stuff. In February 2022, following a Christmas of significant neglect, our niece was placed into the care of the local authority. Applications were made by us for special guardianship, and there are no words that can describe the mixed emotions, anger, upset, worry, frustration, concern, guilt, sadness. We feel empty and lost, defeated, bruised, breathless, done, all mixed into one. The worries about our immediate family were overwhelming, enough at one point for us to consider walking away too. With no one to talk to, we Googled for help. I sent the email. Craig replied, friendly and light. He later phoned back with me sobbing my way through all of that pent-up emotion. The conversation swayed from everything's going to be OK to life will never be the same again and back again. But to just have someone there who understands and has experienced this before meant more than I could ever put into words. Because of Craig taking the time to care, listen and just be there, our niece will have a stable, safe and loving home forever. Because of Craig, my own family will not fall apart because if I'm OK, they'll be OK. Craig has introduced us to a peer group of others just like us. We meet monthly with a live WhatsApp group, all managed by Craig connecting with people who know how it feels and have tried and tested lived experience to make some things a little easier helps us be more resilient. We have support. We have an outlet. Craig has given us the tools to think differently, to understand things from my niece's perspective. Because of this, we feel much more able to cope with and manage the effects of her lived traumas. We're not the only family who's benefited from Craig's real and safe guidance. If through this award, Craig could be recognised for his commitment to supporting families like mine, we would be forever grateful. And we know it would mean so much to him. Well, I'd like to add, Craig, you're an absolute hero. Well done for what you do and congratulations. Oh, the wonderful Susanna Reid and the wonderful Craig joins us now. Uh, Craig, how do you feel watching and listening to all of that? Uh, quite humbled, really, when somebody else reads it out as passionately as she just does. It's, uh, yeah, it's humbling. It's nice. It's yeah. a little bit of confirmation, isn't it? It is. Oh, absolutely. Uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit more about the work that you do at Hattie's and what it means to you? Well, to keep it simple, the, the work that we do is basically what has just been read out. We, we listen to people first and foremost. We think about what they already know and then look for the things that they, that, that they need. So for a small charity like Hetty's, supporting over 250 families every month, we have to be efficient because we're a very small team uh, and we have to know our stuff. And I think keeping it simple is what we do best, um, do good assessments, talk to people. We, we do, to put it in a very 2022 phrase, I'd say we do good humaning. We're there for people. We're, we're in the pit with them when it's dark and we're at the top of the mountains to celebrate with them when we have those little, you know, successes. And that's what being in the recovery sector is all about. It's celebrating the successes and looking for the positives, no matter how small they are. And having somebody like a support worker, someone like me, and the thousands of support workers up and down the country, it's our job to keep pointing out those, those positives so that people do have the hope. And if they don't have the hope, then we're good at holding the hope for them until they have. Yeah. 
I think what really struck me when I was listening to that incredible testament about your work was just the sense of relief that people feel when they find somebody like you, when they realise there's someone who understands their story, understands their situation, and they can just let it all out. Does that, uh, does it get easier for you to hear that? The more experience you become as a support worker, does it ever not touch your heart? I suspect it, it always does. I think when it stops touching your heart, you have to go and do something different. Um, yeah, I always hear it. And I do my best to let them know that I've heard it and give that back to them. Are you dealing with more and more people at the moment? Are the numbers constantly increasing? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the WhatsApp group that Donna mentioned in her very lovely nomination has doubled just in the last month. Um, and that's because we're really lucky in Nottinghamshire in the fact that we've got an excellent support service, a local authority kinship support service. So we work really closely with them in order to make sure all of these carers have got everything that they need in order to give these children the best possible second chance when they've had the worst possible first. And that wraparound support from professionals, such as the Kinship Support Service, Developmental Trauma Attachment Team, Family Service, Health Service, Drug and Alcohol Teams, as well as that peer-led support, which also Donna mentioned, that's the most important thing. Being surrounded by people just like them automatically being able to take off the mask as soon as you walk through the door into a very friendly, warm, inviting living room, because that's what they sit in when they come to our office. It's not clinical, it's a home from home. And for two hours, they're just pampered. They're looked after by us. We make them drinks. People are putting them at the center of the world rather than them having to put everybody else first. So to answer your question, Fee, yeah, the, the numbers have shot up. But that's largely in part, a lot of, there's a lot of contributing factors to that. Some of it is because we are good in a, as a county in recognising and finding the carers that are isolated and bringing them into service to give them support. And then you throw in, you know, there's the obvious, there's a lot of substance use that's rocketed because of the lockdown and because of how people have self-medicated for a lot of reasons. I mean, that's bigger than this meeting today, this, you know, this chat today. But the short answer is yes, it's increased a lot. So looking to the future and using all of your expertise, what are the changes that you need to see? And what more do you need in order for your service to keep on going? There's lots of things. I mean, it's quite a load of question. That is, there's, there's quite a lot in there. But what needs to change, first and foremost, is... There's lots and lots of support for kinship carers now. It's not always been the case. They've been a long time marginalised. Um, the Independent Review of Children's Services has sped up that process. Um, but what really needs to happen is the children, the kinship children, to be recognised in their own right. Because the kinship children have got a very different life. You know, they've been, for no fault of their own and no fault of the carers, are now in an environment which is completely alien to them. They're also affected significantly, most of the time, by adverse childhood experiences, which leaves them with a lot of development trauma and attachment issues. And until schools start recognising that it's just not naughty behaviour, there's an underlying contributing factor to the behavior because they're just being their normal. And thankfully they've changed the wording of challenging behavior to behavior that challenges because they're not, they're not challenging. They're behaving as their history is dictated that they must. They're communicating in the only way that they know how. And until schools and education settings start recognizing that, 
they're still going to be damaged further when they're at school. So, for example, I don't want to get political, but it's true. We've asked the question, so I'm answering it as honestly as I can. You know, parents and carers are encouraged and expected, quite rightly, to go on therapeutic parenting courses, to understand attachment trauma, to understand how to give nonviolent responses. And services also say that parenting should always be parents singing off the same song sheet, and I believe that too. But that must include corporate parents as well. Because whilst the kinship carers are therapeutically parenting at home, they then go to school and all that good work gets undone because you don't yet have therapeutic teaching. And until we do, we're still going to have a very slow recovery for the very innocent children that need all the support and help they can get. And suspending children and putting them in isolation for behaving just how they have developed is, in my humble opinion, wrong. And that needs to change. Well, I think it's far from a humble opinion, Craig. It's a it's an opinion formed out of expertise. So, you know, well said. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you very much indeed. Congratulations You're welcome. on Thank your you. award. And, uh, you know, we all wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. I think you're wearing a Christmas jumper already, Craig. I certainly <laughs> am. Beautiful. Merry Christmas, you superstars. And thank you very much again. Actually quite a tasteful one as well, though, Craig. Very <laughs> nice. Uh, Okie dokie. We move on now to uh, another living legend. It is ADFAM Chief Executive Viv Evans, who's going to talk about the charity's work and achievements over the last year and look ahead to what the new year brings. Hello, Viv. Sorry, I didn't unmute myself. The hazards of technology. When you don't unmute, it's like when you go, well, we used to, I used to, used to go to face-to-face -face meetings and the tube would be, uh, would be late. So that was always the excuse. So anyway, I'll start again. Thank you, Fee. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, congratulations to our winner. And thank you to everybody who supports us. Some of you are here today. But as many of you, um, as V has mentioned, we know from our research that at least one in three people in this country are affected in some way by somebody else's substance misuse. And that might be a parent, a child, might be a friend, a colleague. But the, the impact of substance misuse on somebody else is, is massive. But... The impact, I think, the impact is huge, but that is in inverse proportion to the recognition that this issue gets. Um, we uh, at ADFAM are campaigning all the time to raise awareness of the needs of families. This is not to say that people who use substances themselves are not re requiring of support and help, but the family members and the people around them they need that as well. And our winners, our competition winners and our practitioners, I think, have um, articulated that uh, superbly. So we will, our achievements this year, essentially underlying everything we want to do, is to raise awareness of the needs of our beneficiaries. We very squarely focus on supporting friends and families, and including children, who are affected by somebody's substance misuse. So we're very clear about our mission. Um, this year, uh, I think so many of our, well, the, the, the problem about being able to raise awareness is that uh, substance misuse is stigmatized and there's a lot of prejudice around it. A lot of people still think that if you misuse a substance that in some way, you know, you're not deserving of help. Um, so we've been trying this year to change the language around that um, trying to raise uh, raise awareness of the stigma that attaches itself to families affected by substance misuse because until we can do that, until we can bring it out into the open and um, a family member recently said to me, Viv, we're hidden, 
we're hidden in plain sight. We need to be out there and proud, if you like. And we have been an ad fan working with partners and learning from other campaigns, for example, the mental health campaign um, that has served to destigmatize these issues. And Craig I mentioned uh, and um, Deb touched on the multiple problems that some a family member affected by substance misuse can have. We have family members who come to us because not only have they got are they living or supporting or caring for someone with a problem, but they've got mental health problems themselves or they're suffering from domestic abuse. So what we're finding is, I think, an increase in the complexity of issues that people seek help for. I'm just going to focus finally and quickly on our great achievement this year. And it was born of the ashes of COVID, but our AdFam at Home service. Our AdFam at Home service um, is either online like this or uh, via the telephone. And family members affected by substance misuse can have up to, up to six sessions of an hour, a time to suit them, including evenings and weekends, so it's highly flexible. And they can have a session with a qualified and experienced family support worker who will lead them through a series of questions along the lines that Craig has talked about and Deb has talked about um, around helping themselves to cope with their situation. And we are overwhelmed, not overwhelmed, that's the wrong word, oversubscribed. We've got some money, a little small amount of money, um, but we are at the stage where we're always going to need more. So if anybody has got uh, half a crown in their back pocket that they would like to um, digitally um, to, uh, donate to us, that would be wonderful because that would provide um, every penny will provide somebody with this uh, six sessions of intense um, qualified support. Um, we've got a waiting list now because we are oversubscribed. And I think I'm not complaining about that um, because we continue to campaign and fundraise for, for, for more money to support everybody. But I think what it says, it underlines the number of people who need our help, the number of people who are able, because it's a confidential service, it's on, you know, online or on the phone, uh, you don't have to move from the comfort of your own home. Uh, and I think it, it underlines this huge need, this huge unmet need there is for help and support for anyone affected by someone else's, a loved one's substance issues. So we will continue to fundraise. We'll continue to find routes to provide that service because what we have proved, if nothing else, is there a, there's a huge need for it. Um, I just want to thank everybody, everybody today, um, our winners, our competition winners, because you've been brave enough to speak out about this issue, which is so stigmatised. And it's only by speaking out that we can conquer that stigma and ensure that family members get the recognition, the support and the services that they deserve. Um, it still feels quite a long way away from Christmas for me, as I'm still not there with presents or cards or anything yet. Um, but I would like to wish everybody on the call, our friends and supporters, everyone here, um, wish you all a very, very happy Christmas. I'm afraid I haven't got a Christmas jumper, but I put a Christmas green, Christmas tree colour top on. So I hope that will suffice. And thank you, Fee, for your ongoing support and superb hosting of this event. Thank you. It's absolutely my pleasure. And to be honest, if you hadn't said that you'd accidentally put on just a shirt that had a Christmas theme, we would have thought she's dressed for Christmas. A very happy Christmas to you as well. And yes, uh, anything you can give, and we all know that times are tight at the moment, uh, do give generously. Uh, right, we're going to move on to our final award of the afternoon, the winner of the Family Voices competition. Uh, now, the winner has been read out by the wonderful Sam Ryder, who I think you'll agree has single-handedly changed the place of Eurovision in all of our hearts coming to uh, second to Ukraine 
uh, in last year's competition and uh, Eurovision will be coming to <laughs> Liverpool, isn't it, next year? All the fun of that to look forward to. Uh, he has had quite a year, but he did say that he was absolutely <laughs> thrilled uh, to have learned a bit about what ADFAM does. And he is introducing this year's winner, Margaret, whose brilliant poem reflected on the positive experiences she has had receiving support at Escape which is a fantastic charity providing support to families across Northumberland. The poem is called Where the Birds with Broken Wings Go. And here's Sam Ryder. Hey, what's up everyone at AdFam? I'm Sam Ryder and I just wanted to say basically a massive hello and thank you so much for all the amazing work that you do. I'm just learning about all of it, but I'm blown away and I wanted to share my best wishes and also a massive congratulations to the winner of this year's competition, Margaret Walker with her amazing poem, Where the Birds with Broken Wings Go. It began with a heart broken and nowhere to turn. Now there's a place of comfort where we can all come to learn. Opening the door that we couldn't find, helping hands reaching backwards to those struggling behind. Isolated, fearful, worn out and low, yet a look was all it took to feel yes, they know. No judgments, no stigma, they know how we feel, trying to cope with impossible lifestyles that for us became too real. Where the birds with broken wings go, looking for a way to understand what is needed to get us through another day. Massive congratulations, Margaret. Um, all the best to you and the whole team at AdFam. Hope you have an amazing Christmas from me and everyone here on the M6 services. Peace, love you, <laughs> bye. Uh, so our huge thanks to Sam and huge, huge congratulations to Margaret, who I hope can join us now. Margaret, hello. Can you hear us, Margaret? Are you on mute? I think you might be on mute. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, we've got you now. We've got you. Hi. Uh, Hello, I'm Margaret. not very technical, so Sarah's well, just so, I hope you can hear us now. <laughs> nothing to apologise for. We're all in exactly the same boat. Uh, huge congratulations. What a beautiful poem. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about the inspiration for it? Yes. Well, this was uh, this year was the 25th anniversary for Escape becoming um, a charity, and I think without places like Escape, I don't know how I would have gotten through the last years. Um, I find well, the forgotten carers, um, we live we live with the stigma as well as our loved ones, and that's very hard. I tried everywhere for support and got none. Um, walking through the door here was like, oh, finally, somebody understands what we're going through. Um, it's really hard and Escape has just supported me all the way. I became a kinship carer through the journey. For me, it's been 15 years, seven years, really bad. I'm in a better place. Things are in a better place now. But all along that way, Escape has had the different, you know, the, they've got the kinship carer support group. I joined that um, because after coming for like my one to one and doing the craft, the community reinforcement and family training program, that was brilliant to learn me how to cope for myself and cope for the rest of the family. Because you're right, like what you, that was being said before, it doesn't just affect the person with the addiction. There's a whole family of maybe 20 members or more that are seriously affected. And when there's children involved and young children, it's frightening because you end up involved with children's services, which had I not been to the kinship carers support group, I hadn't a clue what a LAC meeting was, what an SGO, what an IRO. And one day you just get all this thrown at you. Um, without the support, I mean, I did the, we have wellbeing days, I did the kinship carer support group. I've done ACES course, I've done the parenting course, Teen Triple P, all through escape. And that helped me and I was prepared for when I got my grandchildren, because as Craig said before, they have got behaviour problems. And it's not that they're naughty children, which schools and other people look at them as. And that's hard to see, like your grandchildren looked at like that. That's their life experience and it's the behaviour of what they have grown up with. 
um, escape was here all along. You know, like there's not a time, 24 hours a day, I can ring up someone and, you know, like there's always someone there that can help whatever question I've got. Um, they've been just, I, 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 all of it, like everyone I speak to, all the ladies that come here, I've got brilliant friends there that I still meet up with. I think it was about seven years ago I did craft. Um, we still meet up, we support each other. All the that their friends, even the support workers here, they were friends and we can ask them anything. And they just, we need places like this because I've had no support from anywhere apart from escape. That's all so beautifully put, Margaret. I can understand why you've won the competition. Uh, you know, the poem was, was beautiful too. And obviously we're glad things are better. I'm sorry things have been so tough for you on the journey. Uh, this isn't meant to be an enormous gear change, but it will feel like it. Are you a Eurovision fan? Are you now tied into the Sam Ryder fan club? Yes, and I was really humbled to hear my poem read out by him. That was, uh, you well, know, he, you're he, right. Margaret, he was deeply moved by it, actually. Really? Yes, he really was. He really was. Uh, so that is absolute testament uh, to your ability to condense your experience into mm -hmm. something that means something to people who don't always understand what you've been through. Yeah, so it's I'm, a good thing to have done. Yeah, I'm glad that came across because that's what I wanted. I wanted for the 25th anniversary, I wanted Janet and everyone to know what escape means to people like myself and people that come here because we are broken when we come here. And it's lovely, we're well, not lovely, but you know, like we can look back and see ones that's coming in now and how distraught they are. But with the tools Escape learns with, we can learn to have peace in our lives and we can learn to start speaking up for our loved ones because, you know, the help isn't there for them. We've got fantastic help here and things need to change. They really do need to change for our loved ones. Well said. Very nice to meet you. Very happy Christmas to you when it comes. Well, thank you. And, and but Merry Christmas to you all as well. <laughs> yep. Congratulations. So look, this afternoon we've seen things through the lens of family members affected by a loved one's substance use and highlighted the importance of giving proper recognition to these very real experiences. We've also learnt about the importance of family support and the impact of the vital work delivered by people like Craig and the impact of family support organisations like ADFAM, Hetty's Escape and obviously so many others. It is essential that family support is widely available so that everybody is given the opportunity to recover from the devastating impact that substance use can have. This festive period ADFAM has launched an appeal to raise vital funds as Viv mentioned and people are invited to light a candle on ADFAM's virtual lake to recognise and remember the lives of those affected by drugs and alcohol and you can leave a message, a memory or a photo along with a donation in support. So if you're able to please do support ADFAM through this appeal to help them in their work supporting and advocating for families. Links to the appeal are available in the chat and will be available on quite a lot of social media platforms. So a huge thank you to everyone who's attended this afternoon's event, our competition winners and entrants and supporters. And on behalf of ADFAM, we would like to wish you a very peaceful and Merry Christmas and all the very best over the festive period. Jumpers are not obligatory, but they're always welcome. Very happy Christmas from me.